Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another blockchain news video. Today we have number 29 and we're going to keep it going. We have Bitcoin currently sitting at around the same level, 9,623. It has been moving into the red ever so slightly and into the green. So it's going to continue to battle, I think, over the weekend. Right now we're sitting uh, at the beginning of the weekend and I'm hoping that we do move over that 10K psychological level once again before we start next week. I wouldn't want to see us start the week without being at that 10K level. But anyways, we do have Ethereum at 257, XRP at 27 cents, Bitcoin Cash at 371, down almost 2.5%, and Bitcoin SV at 284. Uh, currently, the rest of the market is looking red right now. Like I said, Bitcoin moving into the red and in the green ever so slightly. We have EOS at that negative 1.5%, BNB at almost negative 3%, Litecoin almost negative 4%. Sitting at 69, BNB $22. XRP, like I said, 27. Uh, Leo, we have up 1%. We have Algo up 26%. Congratulations to everybody that did catch that pump on your way up. Make sure to not get wrecked if it does come crashing down. But there might be some good news maybe on Algo, and I might not be aware of it. So I definitely need to look into that. Adam, we also have them at up 5%. But in any case, guys, we got some fun news today that I'm going to be covering some serious uh, news, but definitely some fun news that I want to cover uh, where you're going to see just, you know, if you think that you're in panic because the market might correct or it might go down a few percentages, just wait until you hear this article that I'm going to cover here shortly in this video. So first up, we have DeFi insurance firm Nexus Mutual makes its first payout following BZX attacks. So we know that BZX is that decentralized uh, finance protocol based on Fulcrum. And they got hacked twice. The first time it was an issue with the smart contract, but now the second time it was based on the issues with the Oracle. So when they go to determine the prices of uh, assets and get loans and cash out on loans, there uh, can be a mistake where the platform might get the wrong price and overpay the people that are cashing out in any case. So uh, right now, what we're seeing is that there were two claims worth approximately $31,000 that were paid out uh, to, I believe, two individuals. And the way that the protocol works is that you get your insurance based on the investment that you took or the loan that you took. The network or the voters within uh, the NXM to, um, environment go ahead and vote on your behalf so they decide if the money uh, should be pulled for your claim or if it shouldn't be and then it is also done prior to you getting approved or disapproved for the insurance so you would know ahead of time and then once it gets uh, validated then you'd get that payout and as you can see it happened a few days ago with bzx and it seems like the payout was already made for the claim so it was actually kind of Kind of quick right about a one to two day wait so that's pretty good to see this working in action this insurance is crypto insurance service uh and that's how nexus is currently working so uh what better way than testing it out to see if it actually works right so that's good news and you guys could know that you know if you need an insurance for crypto for a program that you might be uh doing that might you know might not be that safe or you're afraid of risk then you can go ahead and try to figure out how to set up with Nexus. So that should keep you guys covered. Next up, we do have Cardano to undergo network upgrade in preparation of Shelly. So uh, we continue to wait for Cardano to move forward, but ever so slowly, they just, you know, pace themselves. And right now they got Ouroboros consensus algorithm is going to be coming very soon. So they're looking to put this in place first and this is going to allow a few things right so the first one it's going to make the proof of stake consensus protocol uh, more secure and there should be more promise of that decentralization concept right so the main focus of shelly is to essentially let the community be the block validators for the staking now ouroboros is going to be adding several features that's going to make it harder to corrupt those validators and that's what I would like to see. I'm, I can't wait to see this update and upgrade already take place because, you know, we've been waiting for Cardano now for quite a few years. The excitement from 2017 and here we are into 2020 and we're just starting to see that 
you know, further slow movement. So hopefully it just picks up. But I think 2020 is definitely going to be a big year for Cardano. So keep an eye on them. And then with the proof of stake consensus, right, and how it might be paying out, it's, it's good. It might be a really good option, guys. So keep an eye on it. Next up, we have oil prices are now more volatile than Bitcoin. It's kind of crazy to hear that statement, right? But let's look, take a look at this graph right now from West Texas Inter Intermediate is showing that their oil prices uh, in one month fluctuated this much. So the red line here that you can see in the video is going to be representing the oil price. So you can see how it went up over almost 100% since uh, before December 2nd. And then you also see Bitcoin is this blue line. So it hovered between that 50% and 75% volatility. And then down here you have gold, the, the yellow line, and then the green line is going to be your S&P volatility, so the stock market. So, you know, oil definitely looks a lot more vol volatile. I don't really know what the heck is going on here with uh, the oil industry or why the prices are rising in the way that they are. But, you know, keep an eye on it. And hey, maybe it might be a better investment than Bitcoin, right? At least it showed to be that way in the past uh, month or two months, so. Pretty interesting to see. Next up, we see hurry up and regulate crypto. FSB chair urges world leaders. So this is it, guys. Nothing better to witness than uh, having been in crypto, you know, for quite a few years now. And then seeing that hype, seeing the drop down with the bear market, surviving the bear market of 2018, 2019 and stepping into 2020 with the World Economic Forum, seeing all these uh, countries running around trying to. Uh, establish their CBDCs, and now it's literally just um, you know a rushing game. Not only uh, uh, vocally, but also just you know these leaders are really telling each other like, "Hey, step up your game, guys. Step it up because you have to create more regulatory frameworks for crypto." You know, we're worried about the innovation that's taking place with the, the digital payment systems. Uh, this guy, you know, he's the chair of the FSB and he's a governor and vice chairman for supervision of the U.S. Federal Reserve. So this is definitely a big wig, guys. This is somebody that, you know, uh, has has some firm power and is uh, calling out to governors and, and other world leaders telling them like, hey, this is bigger than just thinking about, you know, uh, a financial route for the people. The people can choose to, you know, use these payments for cross borders. They don't really have to step into cash if they wouldn't want to and things like that. So uh, there is a lot of fear when it comes to the stable coins, right? Also, because they're starting to see how the instruments that we have within cryptocurrency are just booming. They're just growing and they're creating a lot more opportunity for the people than what was being provided by banks and all that. So and remember, also, we're banking the unbanked through cryptocurrency, guys. So there's a lot of things that you know, the, the bigger guys are worried about. But the good thing is if they feel that pressure, you know, they're the ones in control of all this regulatory framework crap that they keep, um, you know, delaying to delay the growth of crypto. And once that is in place, then we should be seeing that boom uh, where all these other um, investors kind of jump in, other institutions and all that good stuff. But we'll be covering some more because we have a big institution that keeps working in the background that we're going to touch on. Next up, we have Vitalik Buterin explain the new tech behind ETH 2.0. Uh, basically, he did go into some technical details here in this video, and he's just talking about how ETH 2.0 is going to incorporate that proof of stake, that sharding. You know, we're going to see ETH 2.0 blockchain is going to be lighter to operate the uh, validity of the clients and, and the data that's going to be on it, you know, doesn't need to be stored um, all on its own within the client. So it's basically just going to make it easier to access information from here and there. And um, yeah, it should it should just be easier to operate. So right now what we're seeing that phase zero should be the one that's going to be pushed out on in the summertime. And this is going to be that initial phase. Uh, we're going to see that proof of work is still going to remain for a little bit. But the uh, ETH 2.0 proof of stake should also be initiated around that time. Now, uh, I believe they're trying to run ETH 1.0, which is proof of work within ETH 2.0 at the beginning. And once things are stable by the uh, future applications of um, the iterations that they're going to have for ETH 2.0, so the next phases, then they're going to essentially just keep ETH 1.0 as a receipt of transactions for 
uh, the proof of stake blockchain and then there won't be any proof of work once that happens so that's going to be interesting guys uh, keep that in mind and remember this is kind of the news that did pump ethereum from 250 to around uh, I mean, $200 to around $250 USD. So uh, it's that idea and that belief that the ETH 2.0 is coming within the summertime. Next up, we have why crypto lending will change the credit market. So right now we've seen a number of uh, different crypto learn lenders right in the space. We've had a peer to peer lending that's been taking place. You know, that's where investors can borrow and they can also um, go ahead and lend that crypto. And so what's happening is if you're borrowing, you're setting up your crypto asset as a collateral. So you can get that money um, that you're borrowing. You can get it within the crypto, another uh, crypto loan, or you can get it through a credit card. So it's been very enticing for people because you don't have to go through a bank and you're just kind of putting your assets as a collateral. So uh, in any case, you know, you don't have to worry about your credit reports or anything like that. Um, your crypto asset is what's uh, speaking for your credit or what you're allowed to take out. So you have cred as a notable crypto platform. Uh, they came up with the supply chain lending, interest payment flexibility. You have salt lending, Celsius, Genesis and BlockFi. Salt is mainly focused on borrowers. BlockFi is mainly fo is serving both lenders and borrowers. And the stablecoin market lending is actually earning the highest returns. And here you can kind of see a graph from 2015 all the way to 2011 November, just how high the loans have gone when uh, they've been funded. So right around that 4 billion euro mark, I believe. So that's pretty interesting here. We're seeing about 6% on average for crypto lenders. And even though is the 6% is lower uh, in comparison to the average returns from low risk mutual funds, investors that are shying away are also the borrowers are the ones that are also coming for these loans for the same purpose. So you might want to keep an eye on this, perhaps as um, something you may want to do in the future because it will continue to grow. It seems like the interest rates are going up for those that are lending. Pretty cool stuff. You know, keep an eye on the uh, platform safety you know the volatility you want to make sure you're doing your research you're not just jumping in there you want to do your own research um, and make sure you're not just jumping into something that's um, risky officials arrest u.s resident for allegedly laundering drug proceeds with crypto so we're seeing again just another guy getting busted for uh, laundering drug money through cryptocurrency the bitcoins that were generated uh, were you know, being controlled through computer software uh, on the decentralized peer to peer network. And they were made, it was pretty easy for them to pretty much just be able to go from that cash to getting it into crypto and kind of pushing it through. They're estimating that it was millions of dollars in cash drug proceeds, but they did uh, seize around 200,000. So it's kind of crazy. They only got $200,000 out of those millions. And yeah, just another drug bust on crypto. Next up, we have Fidelity is still looking for Bitcoin mining engineers. So they have a job here put up for uh, DevOps. So developer operations or engineering role. Basically, they want to hire somebody that knows how to bridge that gap between the software and hardware. And they want to make sure that the updates that are being deployed on servers are pretty uh, stable and they're good to go. This is the company that I was talking about, guys. Fidelity is very, very strong within the financial sector. They have a lot of big investors. You know, these are not just this isn't a small company this isn't even just a uh, mildly successful company this is some fidelity's been around for many many years and they control a lot of assets i believe trillions of dollars um, in the amount of total assets that they do control so um, it's a lot of money and they're stating here that they're looking for a recruit to handle the large ha hardware installations for mining so it seems like they want to get into that mining business. They started first with Bitcoin trading service for institutional clients in late 2018. In October 2018, they went ahead and did the custody service uh, to offer products similar to backed and Coinbase custody. And now in November, they did push towards New York to get their uh, license to operate in there. And they went overseas to the UK uh, with Bitcoin within the within 2020. That's where they uh are planning to go they're also trying to push ethereum within 2020 i'm sorry so um yeah within this same year they plan to take 20 uh ethereum into the uk and their other products so there are they are expanding guys and they seem to be taking this 
very, very seriously. Next up, we have Italian soccer giant Juventus Inc.'s deal for Ethereum-based player collectibles. So we're seeing that rare collectible card uh, concept for players now going from you know being physical cards to being non-fungible tokens and that's going to be based on the erc 721 standard and we talked about nfts and what they are here a few times in the channel basically anything that's a rare collectible item can be tokenized uh, whether it's art you know a piece of uh real estate or, or whatnot you can do that and then this is going to be pretty cool because they're going to be doing this and they're going to have different levels of uniqueness. So from one, it's a unique card. Ten is super rare and 100 is rare cards. So uh, it's going to be or I mean, there's going to be one unique card, 10 super rare cards and 100 rare cards accordingly. So for each player. So that's going to be pretty cool. If you have that unique card for that single player, man, imagine how much value that could have. Right. And this is all for people that are already fans of the space. Right. This is this is the next step in collectibles. And we've seen this kind of concept ever since 2018. Uh, they did launch a tokenized poll service to get the voice of um, fans and see what they want to have within the club's activities. And then we also saw a partnership with the token of Socios, which um, they had also helped FC Barcelona, Barcelona launch a similar token. So this isn't the first time we see some kind of collectible uh, tokenized concept around soccer. We we're seeing this just be another product um, through through so rare or so rare um, that we've already seen similar things with, you know, FC Barcelona and the other ones I mentioned prior to that one. Next up, we have users pay one million for digital land as 2017 ICO finally opens virtual world. So Decentraland finally goes live. Uh, people were flocking the space and getting their digital land being uh, purchased. So we're, we might see something like CryptoKitties uh, that took off, right? Uh, a whole bunch of people getting their own uh, kitties and stuff and the, the prices that were going for some of those cats, uh, crypto cats. And then now what's expected is because gaming has become such a big thing. The next thing is that people will want to have that sense of control over where they're gaming right and the next step is adding actual tangible value to that virtual world and in this case it would be through nft so uh if you're if you weren't in the ico maybe you can still take a look at decentraland and just kind of play around with it enjoy it and see where you want to go with it because it might be something as big as crypto kitties or maybe even bigger right there might be more value to having crypto land versus a crypto cat Next up, we have Paxos Credit Suisse claim first blockchain based settlement of U.S. equities. So here we're starting to see the first live blockchain based settlement for U.S. equities. Uh, they were laying out the groundwork throughout the years, but now they finally get to settle stock within the blockchain. And it's limited to just a few participants in volume. Uh, it's going to run that way for about 24 months. They're only going to be able to handle around 100,000 trades per day. But even though it's being so locked down and controlled, uh, at least it's happening. That testing is happening in the U.S. SEC. Uh, it's kind of overseeing that. And the good thing is that once they have that pilot program, uh, they should be opening up. And in essence, all this means for us, uh, the smaller guys, is if they uh, have this opportunity to get stocks tokenized and all that, that's just going to bring more exposure into crypto as a whole in a year, two years, and then so on and so forth for uh, not only Bitcoin, but, you know, Ethereum, XRP, the, the coins that we all care about, right? In the top 10, top 20. So, um, yeah, it should, be, uh, it should be tested in this case for the first 24 months, like I stated, and they're hosting their own private blockchain forked off of Ethereum. So that's uh, going to be how they're going to be working that one. Sweden begins testing Europe's first central bank digital currency. So Sweden has been amongst the first players uh, to not only not use physical cash, but most of their payments take place on uh, less than 20% of their cash transactions are actually uh, taking place. So most of them are within credit or debit cards or mobile payments. And now they're jumping into the whole CBDC concept that just initiated this year. And look at the date, guys. We're late February, right? And W or World Economic Forum took place in January. 
So look at how quick these guys went ahead and pushed out their uh, central bank digital currency. So there's a lot of urgency, guys. It's, you, you think, hey, oh, wow, what's going to happen with cryptocurrency or, you know, is Bitcoin a risk? And of course, cryptocurrency is a huge risk. But I've never seen, you know, in history, you, you compare other big events. You don't see banks taking action this quickly in less than a month, you know, from the moment that they had World Economic Forum. That's a big deal. Uh, we also see that, you know, they, they have their reasons for it. But Brazil is also announcing another system. Uh, it's called PIX. It doesn't have anything to do with crypto. If anything, it's just an Internet uh, payment that is being pushed to actually circumvent cryptocurrencies and it'll you know integrate atms but then again this is just brazil doing it we still have bigger countries like china you know russia and all those big players they want their uh central bank currency so uh no need to really worry about this brazil announcement there was a bigger article on it i didn't want to go too too depth into it because you know i i don't see it being an actual competitor to cryptos but in any case, you know, it is highlighted here. So you guys get that information. Uh, next up, we have Norwegian Air may allow customers to pay with crypto as soon as spring. So another opportunity to use your crypto, guys. Now you'll be able to pretty much fly from uh, Europe. They go into Africa or North Africa. And you should be able to go around with crypto. It should be available as early as this spring. So by, you know, summertime this year. Some of you may be posting, you know, how you purchased a uh, crypto or crypto flight. Let's call it that. Right. A flight from Europe to Africa or other destinations with crypto. So that'll be pretty cool. It's going to be supported with NBX or ticket payments. And um, yeah, that's going to be it for that one. Indonesian Customs joins IBM's blockchain supply chain platform. So Indonesia continues to get more interested into blockchain now they're accepting and working with trade lens which is providing an api for supply chain data you know it's handling around 10 million events weekly so that is a lot of data you know it's on the blockchain it's immutable tracked and it's being broadcasted to the blockchain so it's going to be safe and something that they can rely on so good news from indonesia and blockchain and last up today guys we have u.s department of education is backing blockchain research Efforts tapping into $87 billion of corporate training industry, guys. So an absolutely massive, massive, massive war chest for getting blockchain education in place within the United States. February 20th, guys. Absolutely insane. Two months into the year of 2020, and these are the titles of articles that were um you know, covering in this channel, it, the, the news can't get any bigger than this. So the way that's going to work, they're going to be uh, targeting applications that are designed for companies to spend around $87 billion annually for certification programs, corporate programs. They're going to have around 738,000 credentials offered nationwide. And this will trickle down, of course, to the K through 12s higher education, but mainly right now it's going to be for the workforce because they want to get more uh, developers, more people as a whole, right? You don't just get developers within blockchain. You also need people that know what they're talking about. Businessmen, you need uh, marketers, you need all that good stuff. So a very high amount of money going here into place for the education space of the United States, guys. This is it. So if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and click the like button. Let's comment down below and talk about this kind of news, especially this last article was pretty big. We had the FSB guy, you know, panicking and telling people to to get the regulatory frameworks in place at other nations and stuff. So that was also pretty good, but just absolutely jam packed way to end the work week here with news for crypto. I'm still surprised we're in the red. All this bullish news. This is absolutely insane. So uh, go ahead and sub to the channel if you want to stay locked in for more crypto and blockchain news and i'm gonna see you guys on the next one